Okay, so what I want to do in this uh, mini series here on YouTube is to show a concept called, and this is one that's being very, becoming very popular, Flow Microservices. And this is going to be uh, developed in Power Automate. So the basics uh, with this is, is to build reusable flows, uh, especially for those heavy lift uh, flows that are designed and developed within organizations so they can be reused and you don't have common those different types of flows or copies of those the logic of in those flows across multiple flows because it would just be a sticky point to update and to integrate so what does that mean and let's just take a very simple business use case and that would be sending emails so here you're going to have an external user and every email if your branding company or marketing department is on top of things, you want those external emails to be branded, especially when you're sending emails to clients. So what 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 does that mean? What does that look like? So, right, so let's just say this is the, the customer and you have a backend system that does some work. So let's just imagine that you are sending the confirmation email that an order has been processed. So in alignment with Tesla, and you guys know that I'm a huge Tesla fan. We have an order for floor mats for one of the vehicles. And when the customer places the order, obviously they're going to place the order from the public facing website. And then we have a downstream process that lot, uh, that hits in, inside of the P, uh, CRM. And from that CRM, uh, the request gets routed to the internal inventory team. I'm making all this up as I go. And from the inventory team, they process that order. And when they process the order, they actually use a power app to confirm when the order is actually done or the status of the order. So imagine, so getting all the way to the power app. So the user, right, the intern employee will get the request from the CRM. Okay, I should be typing these out. So they have pick up the request from the CRM and they will actually do some work. So they, you know, just make this a black box. They're going to do some work. And as they're doing this work, they're updating this power app. So they would have, and obviously you would have some type of integration with power apps and your CRM. And from there, they're going to select the customer. And then from the customer, they're going to select the item uh, listed. When I say select, these are drop downs because that's going to be part of your integration point here. And here, they're really just going to, you know, fill out some verbiage, and they're going. To, there's going to be a status field somewhere. Let's just put the status field here. So this would default to new order. They would fill this out. They would click submit, and you know how we do. We love using SharePoint list to save this type of information. So we're going to use the SharePoint list. So once that data saves into a, a SharePoint list, then we will have that trigger a Power Automate. So with this Power Automate flow, it will run through the various actions that are needed. Now, there, this Power Automate really only triggers off of three main statuses, even though there may be five or six statuses that the user can update using the Power App form. And because we want this Power Automate to only trigger on a handful of statuses, what we would leverage is a conditional trigger. So the trigger will be when the SharePoint item is created or modified, but then we will go into settings on the initial trigger action and set the condition to only trigger on these three status changes. Okay, so these are the different statuses that can be selected by the status box here and on the Power App. But when it comes to the Power Automate, we only do work when the status is open because we send a notification to the warehouse team to go ahead and start. Uh, I'm sorry, we send the or uh, request to the purchase team. I, I don't know. I'm just kind of making this up as I go. But so you you know you have to get it reviewed, approved, and our or if it's not approved or if it's back ordered, whatever they may select it on hold. So we'll select. Uh, send the information over to the team 
they would make a decision uh, if we want to process this order because they have to probably run payment, whatever, whatever. And once it gets through here, really approved, and it goes to a pending status. And the user, so the the, the team, the, the the employees are actually changing it to these values. So in Power Automate, we only do work when it's open, pending, or ship. Any other changes to this, either typos or any other updates, it's going to send a request here, but this flow would not run because the conditional trigger will be only looking at these three statuses. Make sense? And this is a common scenario, and this is how you kind of get, one, you want to optimize your flow. If you're not doing conditional triggers and you have a trigger that says when the item is modified, you want to put these conditions in there to make sure that your Power Automate is only running when it needs to do work and it ignores everything else. Not only does that make, it keeps it clean, uh, like your logs and all this other good stuff, it saves you on the API calls and thresholds, right? Because you don't know want to unnecessarily be flagging this and then there's a condition statement in here that says, okay, we're going to ignore it because it's not open pending or ship. So you're going to ignore those other ones. And this is like a status or a strategy that you should be implementing in your Power Automates to make sure that they're optimized. Okay, so now the one status that we want to focus on when it comes to our microservices piece is ship because once it has a ship status, that's when we send a notification to our end customer. And this line here represent that they are outside of the organization and marketing wants to ensure that any opportunity we interact with the customer, either the email, the website, a form or whatever the case may be, we adhere to the organization brand. So the organization in this example is Tesla. So let's go ahead and see what this ship looks like for a branded email to a client. So what I would do is have another flow that's called send branded email. And there's a couple of ways. Now, the decision you make here will have an impact, financial impact on the organization and on your solution. So send branded email by knee jerk reaction. What you will want to do, and I, you know, you can and cannot, I recommend against it, but you can and cannot. You will want to have this as an HTTP response or HTTP trigger where it, it you know, it triggers the URL related to this Power Automate, and then that's the trigger, and then it kind of does this thing and it processes it. In our scenario, I'm not going to do that for several reasons. One, uh, the HTTP trigger is a premium connector, and that starts to make calls dollars or counts calls dollars or budget in the organization. Your solution creates that budget entry. And instead, what I would do is still have it as a SharePoint list or a SharePoint request when the item is created, not modified, but when created. So when a SharePoint list item is created, that would trigger this process. So normally what I would do is put a SharePoint list on top of this flow that the flow listens to. And this SharePoint list will act as a interface for this particular flow. So the way it would work is that when you get to the step here in you're responding to the ship, you want to send an e uh, a confirmation email or notification email to the client as a branded email. So in the action, I will have it create a new item in this list and it will pass everything that's needed for the email outside of the branding details or the HTML template used for the brand. So it will send the two information, the subject line, the body text and any attachments that's needed all of that would be part of the list item. And when that item is created, it would trigger this Power App, Power Automate flow. And that Power Automate flow would then proceed with the actions needed to brand the email by populating the HTML template and then sending the email based on the instruction that was inserted in that list item. And then that email will shoot off to will shoot off to the client, right? So and this microservice would be the branded email. So this microservice here will have a lot of logic and, you know, a few of the hoops that we have to jump through, right? So we can make this as elaborate or straightforward as needed. So, you know, imagine that you have different types of templates that for the email. 
So for confirmation emails, it is branded one way for new, uh, for marketing emails or newsletter or even social media type uh, emails, those may be branded in a different way. So which branded template or email template that you use can be stored in a another SharePoint list for templates, right? So you can have these email templates stored in a separate list. And then these templates can be tokenized, meaning that you would have like a token for the first name or a token for um, the body or, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever requirement you have for the type of information that needs to be um, inside of a, a email template, you can have those stored here. I love this design because, you know, to get this to work, you're going to have to jump through some hoops, right? So you have to uh, in, in, ingest the HTML. You, you have to build like a token replacement routine and, you know, and then the send routine, you know, maybe you have a service account of what the from email address is. You may or may not use an old 365 action. You may use a generic e uh, send email action. Uh, that's, you know, outside the Office 365, so on and so forth, right? You may need to log in or whatever the case may be. But all that logic, all those hoops you got to jump through, all the, you know, elegant code that you write or expressions that you have to write to replace tokens and all this other fun stuff, all that's going to be in this one flow. And you don't want to replicate that in several different areas, right? So that's where the microservice piece comes in. So you do that heavy lift, you do all that figuring out, and you kind of keep it encapsulated in a single flow. And then anytime that you need to use it, all the caller needs to do, all the caller needs to do is just call this email list and pass it the necessary information. And I also love the list approach because here now I can put required fields on what's the minimum fields needed uh, in order for this service to work and the minimum number of fields needed or, or information that's needed. Uh, for this to successfully send an email and putting those required columns on this list will enforce the caller to to make the right calls when they're creating the item. So again, that's the concept. This is, you know, in the next series of videos, we're going to build all the nuts and bolts on how to make this happen. And again, this is a pattern that could be reused. We're doing a very simple branded email microservice, but you can do this for Workday integration, Salesforce integration, reading and writing to a SQL service, SQL server on-prem, a SQL server in Azure, so on and so forth. Like the options are limited, but this is one of those patterns that as, especially if you're building for enterprise, because you want to minimize the number, it's dry, like don't repeat yourself. And these microservices are flow functions is another acronym or name given to these. But this is a pattern that you want to embrace, you want to reuse, and that way you can get the most mileage out of your heavy work or your heavy lift when implementing some of these solutions, okay? So that's going to be the series of this micro, this is going to be the purpose of this micro, micro series. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Let's get started.